Yes, this is Danny Pepperseed, live and direct from Kwaku in Amsterdam. And I'm here with a lovely Itana. Itana, how are you doing? Tell me now, Peppa, 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 Peppa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, Itana, this is officially the first interview we do together, you know? know like, right? like, like, we only met like last week in, sure. in, in Gale in Belgium. Well, of course, we had been in touch like for years over, over the Twitter and yeah. social media, but well, finally, we, 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 we got to meet in person. So, sure. yes, I'm very happy to be here with you and finally being able to, to interview you. Um, Let's talk about your European tour. How's it how's it been going so far? Fabulous. Like, I mean, they know all the songs. Um, who don't know the songs from the fourth album, I Rise? They're listening deep. And if they don't know everything, they're still singing some, you know, and I see them rocking a lot, which is a good thing as always. And I think um, my fans have grown on me and I have grown on them. So we have a better, you know, we have a better show, a better relationship at the time of the performance. <laughs> well, that, that's, that's great. Well, you, you just performed over here at Kwaku Festival in Amsterdam, where you, you performed at um, uh, Rural Reggae Summer, like in, in Germany last weekend. You were in Belgium as well, Reggae Gale. Yeah. Been doing like some great festivals, so that's really like an opportunity co to connect like with a lot of the, um, a lot of the fans, you know. So, um, how's the whole Europe experience like? Not so much like the fans, but how do you like it to be here? Um, well, I think the food is a lot more. Um, I can find a lot more organic stuff, especially in London too, as well, being back and forth. And um, yeah, certain foods not hard for finding. I'm good. I'm. 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 I'm you know, happy meeting the fans when I go to the supermarket, you know. <laughs> when I go to any any place, just walking around, people come up and say, and they look at me like this, and they go like this and say, are you Etana? <laughs> you know, so yeah, I'm enjoying all of that. Just meeting the people on a one away, not even at, at any festival or, any, or at any shows. You know, taking pictures as I go along. When I talk about reggae music, I talk about hearing the keyboard Well, let's talk about your latest album, the album I Rise, you know, like released about, well, 10 months ago now. Um, real great album, done very well for you because it was on, on, on number one in the Billboard reggae chart. And um, I read you were the first um, female artist that, to hit that number one spot like for, for quite some years. I think 15 years there hasn't been a, a female reggae number one. So congratulations with that, you know. Well, that album was a lovely album, and well, tell us a bit about the whole concept because what I liked with that album was that it was mainly all new tracks. It was one track, I think, um, that, that you pushed out before as a single, yeah. and then the complete album was fresh and was new to me, and it sounded so great, you know. So, tell us a bit about the whole concept behind the album. Well, I remember um, the, the ANR and I had an idea that I wanted the, 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 the songs to be stronger more live, more of everything, you know? And I remember um, people in the company, in VP, saying, well, you don't have too many singles out. How are you going to put an album together? And we said, no, that's not the point. We don't want a bunch of singles thrown together and call it an album. We want to put fresh songs out there, work them ourselves to make them as popular as we want to make them, you know, and have people grow with these songs. And um, I did Trigger, which was just something for them to listen to while we create the album. So it was never meant to go on the album. But the regular routine for a record label is to put a song out there that is already known to the people mm -hmm. on the album. And that's how Trigger got on the album. But we weren't afraid about anything. We just wanted to do fresh songs to all of the reggae lovers and reggae fans 
across the world, and that's what we did. All the sound, the man in the level, all the sound, of in a green zone seven, all the sound, tell me what I want, tell me what I want, still I'm in the pool, in a little bit, string up big sound, and I hold a bit, watching the youth them play, I bet smile on them face, the shop right, but I rise every day. Well, the album's produced, so most of the tracks are produced by Clive Hunt. And for, and for those kids who don't know Clive Hunt, Clive Hunt is a real legend, a real boss, and a real general, as you said. You know, like, being coming from so far, he, he worked with a Jamaican military army band. Um, he, he worked with Byron Lee and the Dragonairs. Well, he was the one to write, compose, produce, and arrange like Milk and Honey, which was a big hit for uh, for Dennis Brown, of course. Like together with Ink Crowd, he worked with Wackies in in America. Yeah, and what he also did, he he. he, he he worked. He, well, he worked with Chaka Khan, I believe, and 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 I think Grace Jones. He also did this great album by the Abyssinians. So his his track sheet is so long. long. Yeah. So how did you get Clive on board to do the album? Was it your idea to link him up, or was it a link up through VP? It was the NR Neil Edwards. Based on what I told him, I wanted to do. Um, he said that Clive would be the best person for me. And I'm thinking, okay, but Clive Hunt, no, he's been in this for a long time. You know, maybe we should get some fresh young, young ears. And he was like, trust me on this. When I went to the studio, we did the first song. I'm on my way, though the journey is so. And the way he works with me on the track. First, him, you know, record him the one instrumental. He went back and listened to it again. And a couple of days called the whole band again in the studio to fix it, like to tailor it to the lyrics and the melody. Yeah, that <laughs> was a great, great, great combination of you together. Now, when you look at the album, you do a cover on it yeah. by Marcia Griffiths, yeah. Marcia Griffiths, yeah, stepping out of Babylon, you know, and like, of course, like we all regard Marsha as the queen of reggae music, and yeah. well, you're definitely like in that royal line, so you're definitely yeah. like, like, like one of the new princesses to come up, you know. <laughs> so tell us, did, 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 did you pick that track, or was it was it Clive who said no, we will do um, a cover version? Why did you chose that tune? Um, I got three songs, one from Marcia Griffiths, one from Rita, one from Judy Mawatt. Black Woman from Judy Mawatt and um, One Draw from, us, from Rita Marley. Yeah. And Marcia Griffiths is someone I know, I, I talked to, had dinner with, went to her house a couple of times. We did really, really good. Like, uh, we had proper conversation. She's a good person. And that's reason, the reason why I did the song, to be honest. Um, not just because it's a great song and it was really popular, but because of the personality of Marcia Griffiths. Yeah, she's uh, a great person. Yeah, well, definitely. We, we, we met her a couple of times. We interviewed her a couple of times. And, well, she's really like a lovely person, you know, like um, always in a good mood and always have enough stories to tell, you know, because, <laughs> well, she, she's you been out there. <laughs> we only hear the, we only heard a fraction of it, you know. And sometimes when she tell you stories, right? She's the funniest person ever. The way she said things, and she tells you and look at you like this. It's true. We're talking. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and big up Marsha, you know. He's laughing. Everybody, had, you know, we're keel over, and she's like, "No, but it's true." <laughs> I love her. Love her. Yeah, man. Great, great artist. Great singer, you know, too. So. Well, that album, you know, it made number one in 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 the world, the reggae chart. You know, we yes, we you. we we made a compilation like as as everybody who contribute and and we voted. Yeah. You know, for the best album for 2014, and, yes, you know, and I saw that mm -hmm. it was in one of the like the top five in the top five of people of, of albums for the 2014 for the year 2014. Well, it's actually well, it was a shared number one together with Chronix, you know, yeah. Pop, pop, pop. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm, I'm happy we finally could talk about the album. Um, we were in Jamaica and we were supposed to do an interview with Clive as well, but unfortunately that never materialized yet. But you know, next okay, next next time, next time we're going to be there, we're gonna we're definitely going to do the interview. There. I hope I'm there. Yeah, well that would be great, you know. I so. love Clive Hunt. He's the real, real. He's a good person. I mean, 
very talented, very musical. He would give away everything he has just to do music. And that's what I love about him the most. He would give everything. Yeah, well, and he's a great instrumentalist. I think yeah. he plays about like six or seven or maybe like eight or nine instruments, you know, so. Everything that you can think of, Clive Hunt can do it. People talk, that's what they do. They don't understand how they say like push and control. Yes, they like, what do you do? They call me names. So what's up next for Itana? I'm doing the rest of the festivals, then going to Jamaica, Montego Bay, where I have an acoustic show live. I think that's going to be wicked, you know. Um, when will that be? Um, let me see, August, August 29th. But then I have to come back to London to do two shows. And then after the two shows in England, then I continue to record um, songs. <laughs> yeah, so you're, you're, you're working on a new project already? Like, do you have any concrete information that you can share with us already? So there is a group called The Gaff, right? Which is three people, three people in my band, including me. And we just have some wicked songs that are about to come out. So look out for those. Different thing, altogether different thing. But I think it's stuff that you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna dig into, yeah. Well, we look forward to that, you know, and... And you know, you're gonna get it first. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the good thing, you know, I love to hear that, I love to hear that, you know. Well, Itana, thank you for, for your time and thank you for, 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 for being with us, you yeah. know, like, it was a great pleasure to talk to you and, yeah, well, any future pro um, project, let us know and, and we'll be there to support it, like, 100%. Sure will, I mean, I'm sure you will know, I'm sure, because it's... it's it's something to talk about. It's, it's totally different. You'll see when it comes out. Not too long from now, too. Very, like, shortly, right, Ronakana? All right. Well, this was Danny Pepperseed and the lovely Itana from Kwaku in Amsterdam. Bless up. <laughs>